The Creality K1 Max is available since July 23. After startup problems, updates and delayed root access, the question arises, is the K1 Max a good printer now? Sehrs and Glück auf, I am Jan, and here I have the K1 Max which was given to me by Geekbuying for this review. Way as well as Creality have no influence of the content of this video. So back to the topic. There are already reviews about the device in its out-of-the-box state, but I'm interested in how the printer behaves with a few adjustments and clipper with root access. Since the release, Creality has published some updates, be it for the Creality Slicer, whose profiles and calibration models now finally work reasonably, or for the system of the printer itself. The printer itself has also received hardware fixes. The two main problems, the extruder and the hot end, are already replaced on some K1 Max at delivery, are enclosed for you to exchange or will be sent by Creality support if necessary. I unfortunately had to exchange both on my K1 and K1 Max. You can recognize the new extruder with its leather being mud and not shiny like the old one. The Bowden tube is no longer being fixed with a blue clip. The new hot end can be recognized easily by the reddish silicone sock. In the worst case, if you have problems, you will have to request both parts from Creality's support and exchange them yourself. You can do this best in the chat on the site or on Facebook. For experienced users, the exchange is a job about half an hour and not overly complicated. You should detach the Bowden tube from the drag chain to reduce the resistance of the filament at the extruder. It is also advisable to increase the height of the glass lid to prevent the Bowden tube from dragging on it and allow more ventilation if necessary. Since the belt was tightened too fast, it needed to be adjusted. This had a positive effect on ghosting on the prints. This is easy to do. Just move the print head forward to the center, loosen the four screws, move the print head in the complete build space to its limit, back to the center and tighten the screws again. Now for the rooted clipper. Why do I think this is so good? It gives us the ability to change configurations and customize the way things work on the K1 Max. But you can break things, and that does not fall under the warranty, so it's your problem then. Therefore, my advice, do this only if you trust yourself to do so. If you break something, it's your own fault. The biggest reason for root access to Clipper, in my opinion, is the input shaping, which Creality, for whatever reason, has severely limited and only performs on one of the axes, and then not to full extent. You can find the link to the GitHub of Cyril Guslan, I cannot pronounce his name, sorry, which explains very simply how you fix the clip of the K1 Max step by step in the description. Once you have rooted the clipper according to the tutorial and adjusted the input shaping, you can and should adjust the slicer profiles to further reduce ghosting. Primarily adjusting the speed as well as the acceleration of the walls have brought a significant improvement. This does not necessarily mean slower. Many users have noted on Reddit that the K1 Max has less ringing when printing fast. Take your time here and test it out. These are all the adjustments I have made so far. And to be honest, this can be a big hurdle for beginners. If you don't want to do this, you should keep your hands off the K1 Max. And either wait for a new revision or buy a different printer. After my adjustments, I can compare the printer. And I do that by showing you prints from the K1, K1 Max, Bumble Lab P1S and the K1 Max with repaired clipper and adjustments. For the comparison, I always use Zunlu filament in different colors for the respective printer. Gray for the K1 Max out of the box, green for the K1 out of the box, blue for the Bumble Lab P1S, orange for the K1 Max with rooted clipper and adjustments. Back to the K1 Max. Basically we have, from a technical point of view, a great printer that could have used some more time in development at Creality. We have a large closed build space of 30 by 30 by 30 cm with Core XY and Creality OS, as Creality calls its own fork of a clipper. Brings large and neat prints to a bed, be it with PLA, ASA, ABS or PETG. What I don't like, however, is that to get the ghosting ringing under control, you have to jump through a few hoops. Even after fixing, input shaping, a stable rubber mat under the printer and patience in adjusting the print profiles, I have yet to get the ghosting to a level we have with the Bumble Lab P1S out of the box. Compared to the out of the box state, however, a clear progress can already be seen. I am firmly convinced that this will be possible with more time and love. 
and maybe some further updates. But unfortunately, not yet. At least not from me, but maybe I'm just missing a little nudge in the right direction. What do you think? Write it in the comments. I have to admit for my part, I really want to like the K1 Max, but the amount of time I had to put in it made it difficult. That's where the experience with a Bumble app is different. No, this is not meant to be a hate video about the K1 Max, where the conclusion is better buy a Bumble app. As nice as the Bumble app P1S is, it has its little aches and pains that you have got to use to, especially when working with the AMS. What I want to say, generally you have to deal technically with the printers, no matter from which manufacturer they are, and if you know what you are getting into, you will have fun with the K1 Max or the P1S. With the K1 Max, the effort is just very high at the beginning, and if you do not know this beforehand, the frustration can become extreme. But honestly, the K1 and the K1 Max are also cheaper than the Bumble Labs. Mainly because of the initial problems and the related PR disaster that effectively destroyed the reputation of the devices. But once you get past the initial pain, if you get a unit with faulty extruder or hot end and had to swap them out to make the adjustments, you have a decent printer. If you don't feel like doing that, you should definitely keep your hands off the K1 K1 Max. The K1 Max definitely has its place for me, if only because of a large print space in which a Mandalorian helmet fits in one piece. Since I base coat, sand and paint those models, the ring is no issue since you cannot see it anymore. I must admit though, I had printed the helmets before retightening the belts, so there could have been a bit more improvement here. What do you think about all of this? Do you have one of these printers? If so, what was your experience so far? For my part, I have to honestly admit that the K1 and K1 Max made it hard for me to like it at first. However, after the initial problems and root access to the clipper, it has gotten much better. My conclusion. Can I blindly recommend the K1 and K1 Max? No, definitely not. You have to realize you have to put work into it for it to be really good. Is it a bad printer? No, but it could have been much more. I hope I could help you a little bit to bring light into the darkness and possibly help you with your decision. I, for my part, am out of here. Keep printing, Jan.